So our presentation of Eclipse is divided up into four main segments, the industry size and growth, competitive environment, business strategies and organization structure, and the financial plan and statements. Now, for the industry size and growth, this is just a chart about the pet ownership of uh, U.S. households in millions. As you can see on the horizontal axis down here, we have the years between that, that we are looking at. And on the vertical axis, we have the households per million. As you can see in 2011, 69.8 million households had at least one pet. And in, seven, and in 2013, 72.9 million had at least one pet. That is a 2.1% increase. It just shows how we have a great opportunity for our business because we are part of this pet market. This is the industry size and growth of exotic pet ownership by U.S. households per million. As you can see again, on the vertical axis we have the households per million and on the horizontal axis we have the years. In 2011, 9.2 million households had exotic pets and in 2013, 16.3 million had exotic pets. This is a 10% increase. Once again, this is a great opportunity for us because we will be selling exotic pets. Now this is the percent increase in pet food and accessories in Europe from 2013 to 2014. Pets are really recession proof in Europe, which means that no matter what, even if Europe is in a recession, which it is right now, they still buy food for their pets and accessories for their pets to make sure that they are healthy all the time. So here's a quick pie chart about the U.S. pet industry's competitive market. As you can see, two companies control 67% of the entire market, PetSmart and Petco. Those are our two main competitors, but the key, the key thing is that they only sell domestic animals. They don't have the product line that we offer. <clears throat> and here is the, um, how many of the VEI businesses actually sell animals. So this is basically who our competition is. Less than half a percent of the entire 5,000 VEI businesses sell pets. That means the other 99.5% sell things that aren't related to our field at all. So we're basically in, a, in like a field with ourselves. We have virtually no competition at all, which is a really good opportunity for us. Now, our focus is on the high growth rate of the exotic pet market by and we will develop an affordable and unique product line. As you can see, these are just some examples of the animals that we will be selling. And we will be selling them for less than $300. The reason we picked this price point is because... Now, our first example of a pet that we will be selling is called a Flying Dragon. He's a cool, small looking little fellow, and his selling price for this pet is $45, with a starter kit of $200. Our annual food contract for this specific pet costs $84 or $7 a month. Probably the scariest example we have in this PowerPoint is a Colombian Rainbow Boa with a selling price of $80 and a starter kit for $300. Our annual food contract for this is $180 or $15 monthly. What I'm here to tell you about is how we're going to develop strategic relationships with our wholesalers in order to minimize our startup costs. First of all, we're going to follow the standard retail business model with the exception of inventory, being a middleman business. Now, We've identified several exotic pet wholesalers who can ship the pet, the food, and the starting kit directly to the end user, which is just beneficial for our profits. All of the wholesalers that we chose serve a global market, which as Mohammed mentioned earlier, is just impertinent to the business, considering that a majority of our market is not in the United States. It's overseas. It's all over the planet. Now, all of them we chose, they're eco-conscious and are familiar with the legal constraints of this business. And one such business that we've chosen is Backwater Reptiles of Roseville, California. They will be our primary supplier for this year. Thank you. And our uh, organization is divided up into six departments and each have a uh, chief officer. They have a vice president reporting to the officer and several directors underneath them. Hi, I'm Janelle Bagarna. I'm the Chief of Human Resources, and I'd like to um, introduce my vice president, Tyler, Hello. and two of my three directors, Tom and Peter. Hello. 
So for the next 90 days, we plan on imp implementing these projects. Good afternoon. My name is Faraz Hashmi, and I am the Chief um, Information Technology Officer. Um, I would like to begin with introducing um, our department with our Vice President, Peter, um, our three directors, Sergio, Natar, and Samson. For the next 90 days, IT will be mainly focusing on the website, the design, the layout, and content of our website. My marketing department, this is my Vice President, Connie, and these are three of my four directors, Nick, Michael, and Dushi. Over the next 90 days, we plan to develop a global customer profile. Hi, my name is Mohammed. I'm the, I'm the Vice President of the Sales Department. Here's our Chief of, of Sales, Anthony Calderon. Sadly, he was sick. Uh, sick for the past week, so I have to take over for him. And here's one of my directors, Matt Lowe. And over the next 90 days, our main focus is to develop and implement detailed sales plans to meet the, to meet the uh, organization's worldwide sales goals. Hello, um, my name is Rudy Bikil. I'm the Chief Financial Officer. Our Vice President is Keyshawn Patel, and our two directors, Miguel Gutierrez and Nancy Patel. Hello. So as you already, may already know, the accounting department deals with um, everything that's money related. So over the course of the next three months, um, our goal is to create and review financial reports. Good morning, already. I am the Ch I'm John Fred. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer. Sadly, my Vice President could not make it here. I apologize for that. These are my three directors, Ravi, Bayram, and Safina. Our uh, goals for the next 90 days are going to be creating a management reporting system which will track our goals versus our progress. Slide, as you can see here, it's the break-even analysis. On the vertical axis, we're putting the amount in dollars, and on the horizontal axis, you'll see the units. So the break-even point occurs when the revenue curve crosses the total cost curve. Good afternoon, Board of Directors. My name is Keyshawn Patel. So as you can see on the side over here, we have a display of the income statement. I'd like to point out that, first of all, I know there's a lot of information on the slide, and it's, um, it can prove to be overwhelming. So we can take this one step at a time, starting with the top. So if you look, you can see that on, for our online sales, we have three main revenue streams. You guys did a, the kids did a really a nice job. Seriously, I think uh, very impressed. I think your legal problems or situations, let me use the word situation, is going to be much greater than you think. I haven't seen anything in you made your description and talk about legal. Uh, and what I mean by that, you got various different kinds of animals coming into this country here. And I think you have to be abreast of each state. We did identify that legal issues are going to be a concern. But what we want to do is, since all the uh, wholesalers have familiarity and are eco-conscious, they're familiar with the legal constraints. So we were going to um, establish connections with them and find out what these legal uh, constraints are to stay within the legal boundaries. And from then on, we can move on because they, they really know which countries and which states can have which animals and what sort of laws are established at each different state. Well, first of all, I, um, you guys are great. I, I don't know. I don't think I've, I've seen a presentation this professional, even by some of my own clients. So congratulations on what you did. I just, and one of the things that, that I thought about is the cost of exporting. Um, I have a client who does exports, shipping overseas. It's very expensive. Um, and, and even if the wholesaler, if the person that you're working with absorbs that cost or you know, pays that bill, I guarantee he's going to pass it on to you. Okay? So, um, and I don't see anywhere in here. So um, if I could um, address that. Sure. So the way we found it is we took primary research to find our wholesaler. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we took into account the price they charge us in addition to the shipping. And what we did is we marked it up 50% to what we're charging to the other VI firms. So we'd make a gross profit of 50%. So. Okay. And that's overseas shipping? Yes. Of exotic I was just going to say I really enjoyed the presentation. I was thinking of the uh, you know, product price, place, promote, and I thought you did a really good job from a marketing sensitivity to take a look at all four aspects of, uh, of how those things come together in the marketplace. Uh, um, a couple of things, I, questions I did have relative uh, looking, looking at your startup 
costs and the idea of uh, turning a profit so quickly, yeah. I would be interested uh, to hear a little bit more specifically about how you how you intend to do that. It seems, seems like it seems like a pretty quick. But that we do have a positive income, and the reason for that is because we'll be participating in a trade fair, and with that we have accounted for over a million dollars in um, sales for that. So that is why you would see um, a quick change from um, around a negative hundred thousand dollar loss to a profit of a million dollars. Yeah, Mr. Press. Uh, first off, you guys did a fantastic job. Absolutely. Uh, you should all be yes. very proud of yourselves. Um, likewise, I've seen a lot of presentations before, even professionals I work with, and not to this Carol caliber. Um, so I'll start with some of the, the good things. I liked how you used uh, um, how Europe's going through a recession right now, and it showed how it's recession proof, and then um, how PetSmart doesn't sell exotic. One of my main questions, though, is any of the pets are any of them in danger? Because mm -hmm. that would be a uh, probably pose a big uh, legal, legal uh, issue and possibly a um, uh, general issue with the public. So We're planning on completely depending on uh, backwater reptiles, and we were going to take an assertive approach to it in terms of uh, researching on our own, finding the legal uh, constraints mm -hmm. on our own, not completely depending on them, like, uh, like um, uh, you mentioned. And uh, we're going to make sure that we know what we're doing, too, and we're not going to depend on the wholesalers completely. But we will take their advice and their suggestions as well, research that on our own, and make sure that you know what we're doing is uh, legal. Tom, I'm talking to you. Yes, good <coughs> job. You did a great job. So just to piggyback on that real quick, and then we want to get into it. Um, you did, did do a great job, and you look great. Absolutely. Because <laughs> um, I see you all. point is uh, something with the, the overhead right away you know, seems pretty steep to me, especially in regard to salaries, to start out a company with 30 employees right off the bat. Um, I'm wondering if uh, you know if, if you need all those positions right away. Um, I think we do because um, there's a lot of functions, there's a lot of tasks that um, each uh, company, I mean each department needs to take care of, and they're all located on the uh, VEI portal. And I saw how many tasks there are, and I saw like how in depth and uh, like how much time it takes to do those tasks. And I feel like we need each of these employees, and all of them are very uh, responsible. They're all capable of being in managers. That's why we call them directors. We don't have any employees. We have all of the directors, vice presidents, and C level officers because we feel like all of these employees are capable of being managers, and they're all very efficient. I move that we give the officers of VEI approval to move forward with their business plan. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Third. So, so moved. Great. So Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs>